Greetings to you, most particularly to those of you who have been our devoted viewers. It is indeed an honor to welcome you once again to Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, our commitment is to continue to expose time-tested principles for practical application to personal and relationship development matters. My name is Wonola Adetayo, the Shaper. I want to thank you, particularly all our fathers, mothers, and friends who have sent us words of encouragement and even prayers for the continued success of this program. We say a big thank you to you, sirs and mas, and we continue to covet your prayers for continued success. Last week, we treated part one of the topic, emotional intelligence for managing dangerous emotions. We reviewed five common emotions, and through the number of mentions in the Bible, we were able to determine that fear, anger, and hatred are the most potent emotions that we need to watch out for. And we really need to ensure that they don't control us. That is why today's episode, the concluding episode of Emotional Intelligence for Managing Dangerous Emotions is devoted to helping us, especially with that issue. Our Bible reading, will be from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I will be reading from the English Standard Version. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Shall we pray? Our beloved Redeemer, we thank you once again for gathering us together at your feet as your children. We pray today, O oh God, that you will help us to understand and to comprehend the subject of emotional intelligence so that, Lord, we will be able to take hold and to take control of dangerous emotions so that they will not wreak havoc in our lives and in our families. And we pray, Father, if any family at this moment is struggling with dangerous emotions, we pray today that that terrible wind will result and be stopped by your word so that we can speak peace, be still into every heart and into every home in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we know that you are here to teach us. Please take all glory, all honor, and all adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The story of Nabal, David, and Abigail, according to 1 Samuel chapter 25. Nabal was a wealthy man whose wife was Abigail. Abigail was described as an intelligent and beautiful woman whilst her husband was described as a mean man in his dealings. Nabal owned a thousand goats and 3,000 sheep, and on this special day, he was sharing sheep. David heard in the wilderness where he was that Nabal was sharing sheep, and he sent some of his men to Nabal. David asked the men to greet Nabal respectfully, using these words, Long life to you, good health to you and your household, and good health to all that is yours. The man asked Nabal to notice the kindness that David and his men had shown to Nabal's staff by protecting the sheep and goats from harm whilst they were together in the wilderness. David's men subsequently requested on behalf of David that Nabal should extend a similar hand of fellowship by giving whatever he thought fit to David and his men. 
from the festive celebration that he was having. When this message was delivered to Nabal, David's servant waited for Nabal's response. To their disappointment and dismay, Nabal was rude to them and sent a harsh word of rejection to David, declaring them to be persona non grata, meaning that they were unknown and meant nothing to him. And he blatantly refused David's request. The servants returned in pain to David and they relayed everything exactly as Nabal had spoken. In a fit of rage, David got 400 of his men carrying their swords to go with him to Nabal with intention to teach Nabal a lesson for his bad behavior and his complete lack of empathy. While this was going on, one of the servants of Nabal informed Abigail, his wife, of what had happened, how Nabal had hurled insults upon and mistreated David's servants who came to request respectfully from him. The servant also told Abigail about the good treatment that they, as Nabal's staff, had received from David's men when they were in the wilderness with Nabal's sheep, how David's men had protected them. Nabal's servant, therefore, urged Abigail to see what she could do, as it was very obvious that disaster was going to befall Nabal and his entire family for this bad behavior towards those who had been good to them. Abigail acted swiftly. She gathered food, drinks in their hundreds, and loaded them on the donkeys. She sent the servants to carry these ahead of her and warned them not to disclose to Nabal. She followed Nabal's servants herself and fortunately met David and the 300 men on their way to attack Nabal and his family. Abigail humbled herself before David and pleaded for forgiveness on behalf of her husband. She begged David to excuse the bad treatment as she was unaware of the visit and the request from David's servants. Abigail pleaded with David that it was a good thing that God sent her to prevent David from unnecessary bloodshed, especially since she had brought gifts for David and his men. As Abigail pleaded for forgiveness, she prayed for David and went further to make requests to David to remember her when God would make him rule over Israel. David blessed God for sending Abigail to him and thanked Abigail for her good judgment in preventing him from avenging himself since he was fully prepared and on the journey to slaughter every male in Nabal's household that very day. David subsequently accepted Abigail's gifts and called off his journey of vengeance. Abigail returned home to find her husband drunk from the feast that he held that day. The following morning, when Nabal was sober, Abigail relayed all that had happened and Nabal had a heart failure immediately. 10 days later, Nabal died because, because God struck him. When David heard what had happened to Nabal, he blessed God for not allowing him to fall into the sin of vengeance and bloodshed. He immediately sent for Abigail and made this widowed woman his wife. It is our sincere heart cry that God will grant every family head and other family members the wisdom and intelligence to deal with emotions that cause much havoc and damage to lives in the mighty name of Jesus. A successful marriage does not happen by chance, it is built deliberately. Just as every building requires a foundation, so does every marriage. In laying the foundation for a lasting marriage, Wanawola Adatayo presents couples and intending couples with practical insights and guidance as a wise coach inspired by the Holy Spirit. The book draws on biblical principles and patterns to instruct and equip readers for a marriage that will bring glory to God while also affording the couple lasting joy and fulfillment. With inspired prayer points and practical answers to 44 frequently asked questions, laying the foundation for a lasting marriage is a treasured trove for readers at every stage of the marriage journey. Send a WhatsApp message or call 0812 402 
0538 to order your copies today. Welcome back. The story of Nabal's lack of emotional intelligence cost him his life, and this was completely and totally avoidable. David's display of emotional intelligence averted the colossal damage that he would have done to his reputation, and indeed, it might have prevented David from qualifying to get to his destined position as the king of Israel. Abigail's demonstration of emotional intelligence not only saved her from the sorrow of mourning multiple deaths of males in her household, but more importantly, secured a place for Abigail in the palace. All those who displayed emotional intelligence in the story, they passed the test of self-control and they were promoted. It is not unlikely to even expect that the servants of Nabal would have followed Abigail to the king's palace when Abigail was promoted. And this is the result of their display of emotional intelligence and of loyalty. I am praying once again that every member of our family will learn the wisdom of God as captured in emotional intelligence so that they can stay in control rather than becoming victims of dangerous emotions we can successfully manage dangerous emotions. Our outline for today, we will look at what does emotional intelligence entail? Then we will look at two emotional intelligence domains. Then we will look at self-help steps to improving our emotional intelligence. And lastly, we will look at how to become a ruler of our emotions. So, what does emotional intelligence entail? It entails five things. The ability to, one, understand your emotions. That's number one. David understood that he felt insulted and therefore he was angry. Number two, the ability to understand the emotion of others. Abigail understood that David would be angry. Number three, what does emotional intelligence entail? It entails understanding how emotions drive behavior. You see, neighbor's servants and Abigail, they knew that the anger and the feeling of insult would likely drive David to do harm to neighbor and his family. So we must understand how emotions drive behavior. You become angry, it can drive you to kill. You become angry, it can drive you into vengeance. That's what was happening to David. It also entails using the knowledge of your feelings, understanding of other people's feelings, and how they drive behavior, to now use that to manage your response to situations and to people. Meaning what? Using this knowledge, you see, Abigail, quickly hurried, packaged gifts, and apologized to David. So she used the understanding of emotion and how it drives behavior, and therefore she used that knowledge to determine the next thing to do. Emotional intelligence also implies using the knowledge of how emotions drive behavior to motivate others. You see, Abigail used that knowledge to be able to package and present a good and logical reason why David must not go out and cause havoc, okay? So these are the five things that emotional intelligence entails. Now, what are the two domains of emotional intelligence? There are two domains. Domain number one is personal mastery. Domain number two is social mastery. Let's look at domain number one, personal mastery. Personal mastery comprises of two things. Number one, self-awareness. Number two, self-management. What is self-awareness? Your ability to recognize and understand your moods, your emotions, and how they affect others. 
self-awareness requires that you take an honest look at yourself. Not, you know, you, you have to take an honest look at yourself, knowing the emotions that are going within you. Lao Tzu, he says, and I quote, he who knows others is wise. He who knows himself is enlightened. Aristotle, the great philosopher, he says, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. So self-awareness, ability to recognize, just as David recognized that I'm angry, I'm feeling insulted, and that's why I want to do what I want to do. The second in personal mastery as domain number one is self-management. It's not only enough to be aware of what is going on with you. It's even more important to control and redirect disruptive impulses and moods. So self-management is about your ability to control and what? Redirect disruptive impulses and emotion. Julian Pekelan, he says, all management starts with what? Self-management. William James, he says, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Several thoughts will come to our minds. We have the responsibility to choose the one that we know will be helpful to us. Proverbs 16, 32, English Standard Version. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. And W.K. Hope, he says, self-discipline is when your conscience tells you to do something and you don't talk back. You see, if Nabal had listened to his conscience, he would have treated David's servants with empathy, even if he wasn't going to grant their request. He would have treated them differently. Let's look at domain number two. Domain number one, personal mastery. That is, be aware of yourself and manage yourself. Number two, social mastery. In domain number two, we have two as well. Social awareness and relationship management. What is social awareness? Your ability to recognize the emotions of others and caring about what others are going through. You see, author John Stoker, he says, if you can't see, hear, or feel the dynamics of a conversation, then obviously you can't manage them. So you have to be able to recognize the emotions that other people are passing through. That is what Abigail demonstrated. She recognized what David must be passing through, how he must be feeling insulted, how he must be feeling unjustly treated. That's social awareness. Then beyond social awareness is now relationship management, your ability to sensitively relate with people and to manage interactions effectively. Joyce Meyer, she says, we can improve our relationships with others in leaps and bounds if we choose to become what? Encouragers instead of critics. You see, instead of neighbor to criticize and say, who are these people? He could have encouraged them. Oh, you want some of uh, my celebration? Anyway, you know what? Nah, I'll just indulge you. But he didn't do that. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Henry David Thoreau, he says, the greatest compliment that was ever paid me was when someone asked me what I thought and attended to my answer. So relationship management is caring. What are other people thinking? Asking why other people are doing what they are doing and then actually acting on what we hear. Now, these two domains, how do they work? So the first domain, the domain number one, self-mastery, works on two things, recognition and regulation. What is recognition? Self-awareness is sitting on what? Recognizing when you are feeling happy, when you are feeling sad, when you are feeling angry, you have to be able to what? Recognize it even when you are insulted. So you must be able to recognize what you see and what you feel. Then regulation is what you choose to do about what you see and what you feel. So being able to defer sometimes or postpone even the feelings of anger. You know what? Let me sleep over it. You know what? Let me drink a cup of water. Instead of immediately saying, somebody did this to me. I'm going to do that to them. I'm going to slap his head. I'm going to go and fight. 
You can say, you know what, let me defy it. I will sleep on it. I will think over it. Yes, I've been insulted, right? So those are the two things that happen in domain number one. Domain number two is also underscored by recognition and regulation. Social awareness is about what? Recognizing what other people are feeling. Noticing what other people are feeling. It is about what? Empathy. Recognition. Putting yourself in the shoes of others. And then, of course, regulation, that is relationship management, is anchored on what? Regulation. It's about taking charge of your emotion when you are interacting with others. So you can choose, you know what, to be sensitive. Even though neighbor felt like, why should these people come to me? If he demonstrated sensitivity to what David and his servants had been doing to his own servants, he would have acted differently. Now, this takes us to five steps to preparing for improving your own emotional intelligence. How do I apply it? There are five steps that you can take in improving your own emotional intelligence. Step number one is monitoring. Monitoring. What does that mean? It means asking yourself, how do I generally react to people and to situations? You have to ask yourself that. You have to introspect. You have to monitor. What are the triggers? What gets me angry? What makes me feel insulted? When do I behave rashly? So you must monitor that. Step number two, as you want to improve your emotional intelligence, is investigation. Investigation, what does that mean? You have to ask the question, what is it in my environment or in my relationships that affect my moods and emotions? Maybe with your husband, maybe with your wife. What is it that they do that usually trigger anger or trigger fear or trigger hatred, okay? Or what is it in the environment that makes you fearful? That's investigation. That's step number two. And as you are doing this, you need to be documenting them because it will help you on your journey to becoming emotional intelligence. Step number three is evaluation. You now evaluate. When these things happen, how do I react to stressful situation? As a parent, do I generally stop my children when I'm afraid? Oh, they came home at nine o'clock, they came home at 10 o'clock, and my mind is besieged with fear. Anything could have happened on the way. It happened when I was pretty young. And I didn't do anything. It just happened that that day, the roads were bad. I got home late. As I entered the house, out of fear, my father, pa, 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 he just started to slap me up and down the place. But it was the fear of what might have happened to this child if something had happened. So we have to evaluate how do I react to stressful situations so that that way now, in the future, you know how to help yourself. Now, step number four. Analysis, what impact am I having on people as I react? What impact do I have? When I scream at people out of anger, when I say nasty words to people out of the fact that I feel insulted, how, what type of impact am I having on people? I need to analyze that. And then lastly, before I can now get hold on the journey for emotional intelligence, is accountability. I must take responsibility for my responses to people. As we round up this episode, we close with the five steps to ruling your own emotions. Proverbs 12, 18 says, there is one whose rash words are like sword thoughts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Five steps to ruling your emotion. Step number one, R recognize emotions in yourself and in others. Step number two, you understand the causes and the consequences of emotions. You can read Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 18. Step number three, L, label emotions accurately. Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it hatred? Is it jealousy? Label it accurately. And then E, Express your emotions appropriately. Matthew 5, 37 says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Don't mean words. Express it appropriately. This is exactly how I am feeling. And lastly, R, regulate 
your emotions effectively. Regulate it. The fact that you feel something doesn't mean you must act in that way and manner. You are responsible and accountable for regulating your emotions effectively. As we round up, I want to urge you, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 2, English Standard Version, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It is God's standards that we must follow, not my standard, not your standard. In today's episode, we have looked at what emotional intelligence entails. We have also looked at the two emotional intelligence domains of personal mastery, comprising of what? Self-awareness and self-management and social mastery, comprising of social awareness and relationship management. We have seen that these two domains hang on what? Recognition and what? Regulation. Regulation is about what I choose to do. Recognition is about, is about what I feel and what I see. And lastly, we have looked at five self-help steps to improve our emotional intelligence. I hope you are going to choose to be a ruler of your emotions. Let me close with Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16, English Standard Version. Fools give vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. In this stressful post-COVID season, all over the world, it is my sincere hope and prayer that you will choose to apply these principles and improve your emotional intelligence to avert further stress, further conflict, an injury on yourself and on your loved ones. If you have been blessed by this program and wish to partner with us, please connect with us on plus 234-812-402-0538 till I come your way next week. This is Wonola Aditayo, the Shaper, trusting and wishing you and your family good success as you apply these principles of emotional intelligence and completely eradicate dangerous emotions from your home and your family. God bless you richly.